What's going on, Jerome's? The Minnesota Fighting Vikings running game was ass. Thank you against the Detroit Lions. There's really no other way to put it. Uh, a total of 17 carries for 22 yards. Dalvin was bottled up, even though he got himself a touchdown, one and a half yards per carry, along a five, along a friggin' five. I, I didn't see that until now. Along a five. Wow. Wow. It, it was rough. And there, there was a number of reasons why the Vikings running game was booty. But we wanted to go through it because it's important to do the post-mortem uh, and just go through. It was like, why? Why did this happen? And see if you can rectify things going forward. Because, I mean, the Vikings offense, it, it's going to have to click. And the running game is going to have to be out there, protect her cousins, maintain play action, uh, take some time off the clock, give the defense a breather, etc. So it's going to be extremely important down the stretch in, into the playoffs. So here are the five reasons why the Vikings run game sucked. Ah, booty. Forgot we got kids watching uh, against the Detroit Lions. Number one. They miss Garrett Bradbury. Now, this is a you win universe sort of moment. Let's try and fit this in. I'm just I'm really good at spreadsheets and stuff, trust me. They miss Garrett Bradbury at, at center. Now, Bradbury was a game time decision. He was out with a back injury, and it, it really was a you win universe. Like the the irony uh after the last three years that Vikings fans miss Garrett Bradbury starting at center. It was just it, it, it's too rich, but Bradbury respect in the contract year since they didn't pick up his fifth year option has been b b b balling. Now Schlutman was fine. Don't get me wrong. Well, give a couple. Pre actually, I think he gave up five pressures, maybe a sack, what, whatever. But Bradbury has been uh, the PFF's tenth highest graded center uh, in terms of run blocking this year. Also, I mean. Bradbury's problem was never run blocking. Like he was a very competent and very solid run blocking center. Uh, pass blocking and one on one spots was his issue, but he's really solidified that this season as well. Uh, but also the leadership, the the line calls up front, not only in pass protection but also calling out the the blocking scheme uh, in terms of uh, assignments in, in the running game as well. That's really important, especially uh, with the Vikings being a predominantly outside zone team. Even though they did run a lot of power uh, on Sunday, or they, they tried to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about that, but. Again, just the whole, I, I, I'm rooting for the Grim Reacher, the pride of NC State. And it's just the whole, you're going to miss me when I'm gone, when I'm gone sort of deal. Next up, number two. All right, so the real reason. Uh, are, are, all, are all these just misshapen, not fitting, island of misfit toys? What the hell's going on here? Anyways, uh, so they missed Christian Derrissaw. Now, Derrissaw missed the game uh, with a concussion. It looks like he's going to be good to go returning uh, Saturday against the Colts, but they definitely missed Derrissaw. And uh, one-third uh, – uh, someone put out a stat. I think it was Kevin Seifert of, of ESPN, who's not Carl Gerbschman, but one th – well, actually, it might have been Alec Lewis. Uh, Matt Lamore and Alec Lewis of The Athletic. But one-third of the Vikings carries over the last five games have been either for no gain or a loss. Now, uh, if you look at the Vikings schedule, the last five games, so Derrissaw missed the Lions game. Derrissaw missed the Jets game. Derrissaw uh, missed the Patriots game. Uh, Derrissaw was knocked out of the Cowboys game, and he was knocked out of the Bills game. Hmm. Correlation. Correlation does indeed cause causation uh, in this situation. And Derrissaw is one of the best run-blocking tackles in the National Football League. He's PFF's number two graded run-blocking left tackle behind only Trent Williams. So he's been a grader, absolute rogue grader out there. And it was a big reason why the Vikings, they... It, it was a mess. It was just an absolute debacle. Uh, next up, reason number three why the Vikings run game sucked against the Lions. The Lions sold out against the run. And you knew that that was going to happen, where the Lions... Knowing that the Vikings were down Derrissaw, finding out before the game that they're going to be down Bradbury, they were going to dare the Vikings to try and beat them with the pass. Now, the Vikings did adjust in the second half, open things up. Justin Jefferson got after it for sure. Uh, but in the first half, they're like, hey, the, the logical thing to do is run against us because uh, the Lions were, even though the Lions defense was certainly improving, they were uh, amongst the bottom uh, of the league in terms of rushing yards allowed. I think they were 31st in uh, rushing, yard, uh, rushing uh, yards per attempt. Something like that. So, like, hey, the logical thing is to get Dalvin going, put together a bunch of 75-yard uh, touchdown drives, take time off the clock, take the crowd out of it. And they're like, no, not on our watch. Respect to what Aaron Glenn and company did. So they, they were going after with run fits in the first half. 8-9 in the box. They were sound discipline-wise uh, with their gaps. Cornerbacks were sealing the edge. Like You saw a bunch of cornerbacks, uh, Mike Hughes, a lot of safeties making tackles in the run game. That's because they were up on the line of scrimmage, and they're being very aggressive. They were keying on number four, and that's why they were able to do some damage. That's why the Vikings had five uh, freaking rushing yards in the first half. That's what Dalvin having a rushing touchdown, by the way. It's crazy. Crazy. Next up, number four. O'Connell was uncreative. So, 
uh, it, it, the run game was a debacle. Now, you have seen Kevin O'Connell mix things up where not only do they have outside zone, they have inside zone. They got power. They got man. They got gap. They got counter trade. Like, they have a lot of creative wrinkles in the running game. But, I mean, Sunday just was not it. It, it, it was almost back to the, the younger Kubiai run, run, pass, punt, run, run, pass, punt so, sort of deal in, in the first half. And, well, when he did get creative with the jump pass, it, it blew up in his face. So maybe it's just like, ah, okay, yeah, yeah okay. But it, it was an issue where Dalvin up the middle, Dalvin to the middle to the left, Dalvin to the middle to the right, Dalvin trying to get outside. Oh, that doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And I, I do think that O'Connell – made some good adjustments after halftime, but he, he should have made adjustments in the first half, but it, it just didn't happen. It didn't happen. So unfortunately, lastly, Dalvin is washed. Now I don't believe this. I, I do not believe this, but Dalvin's 27. Uh, by the way, he is on, on pace to play a, a complete season for the first time in his career, which is great. But uh, 4.5 yards per carry is the lowest of his career. He's got 950 yards rushing. He's going to eclipse 1,000 yards a season again. But uh, And he did bust that 81-yarder against Buffalo. He did have that 53-yarder for a touchdown against Miami. So he can still bust it, but it, it seems like it's different. It, it seems like it's a little bit different this year. And I would wager that this is Dalvin's final year in purple. Because Dalvin is going to be 28 next year. He's due a $10.4 million uh, base salary, none of which is guaranteed. The Vikings can save about $8 million in cap space if they move on from Dalvin. And Kwesi, given his analytics background, uh, paying a 28-year-old running back who has had injury issues, who may have lost a step, Ten plus million per year. It doesn't really compute into the money ball calculation, unless I missed that chapter of Michael Lewis's book. So, uh, Dalvin is not washed Right there, there, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll go with that. Where I mean, th this all could be solved. I mean, Dalvin may go for two hundred. Right? Dalvin might go for two ninety seven uh, against the Colts with Brad, uh, Bradbury and Darisaw back. Uh, so th this may be completely moot. But it, this does feel like a get right game for the Vikings, doesn't it? Where it seems like a game where their backs are against the wall. Everyone's writing them off. Uh, the fans and the media just like ten, worst 10-3 and three team in NFL history, blah, blah, blah. But the running game gets right. Jefferson goes for 200. And the pass rush gets home. And, and Dalvin does, does his damn thing again. And Cousins just throws it all over the lot. Just seems like that, right? Who knows? Who knows? But it's got to be better than the Lions game. I, I think that... Well, the term is overused, but was it a perfect storm with the injuries, with the Lions selling out, and O'Connell having a brain fart, and Dalvin just not having a good game? It's certainly possible, man. But uh, that's it. Five reasons why the run sucked against the Lions. What are your thoughts or our thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.